going anywhere. Um, uh, so I had a lot going on over the last couple of weeks, and uh, a lot of, uh, I don't know, unnecessary drama, but sometimes drama is necessary to kick somebody in the, in the butt to get them going, and that's what happened. So, let's see, it's my new favorite cup. So anyway, um, over the last couple of weeks what's happened is, um, to start out, um, my mom has been, or was on dialysis for about a year, and my mom's personality does not work well with the confined, with the constraints of uh, um, dialysis <clears throat> and she had uh, what happened was um, she was addicted to Vicodin and um, her kidneys um, started accumulating protein and then all of a sudden her kidneys stopped working so what they, what they ended up happening was she was on dialysis, and because of such a, an independent and hardworking person that she was, um, it did not work out well. And so, after a while, uh, the what everybody, well, she decided to stop dialysis, and within two weeks she was gone. Now, I was at work doing all this and I'm kind of on the outside because I've purposely stayed away from parts of my family because I'm allergic to, to drama and I don't really want to deal with a lot of stuff. So that was in, in a lot of this stuff was has I hopefully been resolved. So anyway, um, I got a message from my sister that um, uh, my mom's lungs were filling with water. And so that tells me right off the bat. And I told my manager, who is uh, two steps above my supervisor, what was going on. And she said, well, it's your mama. You better go. So I had to finish my work for that day. Because um, you can't just run off and do like that. It's just, just the constraints of the modern industrial society that we live in. Companies assume that they're more important than, our, than, than we are. It's just part of the system. And um, they let me go, which is kind of a reverse of it. And I work for the Utah Transit Authority and I'm eternally grateful for everything that they've done for me over the last year with the like the, with my foot and and with what happened with my mom so my mom now what happened was uh, I, I got off work and um, loaded up my excursion and I get off work at about 1 a.m. in the morning. So I had to take a couple of hours of sleep. Well, I immediately got up the, that morning because it's the same day. So I got up that morning, got in my excursion, topped off the tank, and drove to Phelan, California. Now, because I'm a driver, I have my cell phone turned off all the time. I ignore my cell phone. I hate my cell phone. I worked for a, a wireless telephone company uh, back in the, the late 90s and I was forced to carry a cell phone. It was a Nokia 1000 that could broadcast at three and a half watts which if anybody ever remembers all the brain cancer that people were getting and stuff like that, oh, this was one of those phones. Now, I'm not saying it's Nokia. I'm saying the broadcast power like that when people were spending 
hours and hours on the phone, um, three and a half watts is going to do something. So I think today's phones um, broadcast in milliwatts, and my phone spent most of its time in the glove compartment with three fully charged batteries, include, not including the one that was in the, the phone. That's the way the old phones were. So anyway, um, I had my phone on me, but I woke up, uh, talked to my neighbor so that my cats don't starve because I didn't know how long I was going to be gone. So I hopped into my excursion and went over, topped off the tank, and took off towards California. Now, um, I did that, and um, all the way through, now see, the way the California or Utah freeways kind of work is up north, it's a little bit more tame. Everybody pays attention to the speed limit. The speed limit's 70. But everybody goes 75, and if you don't go 75, you're a nuisance to yourself and everybody else because everybody's driving around you, and if you stay on the right-hand lane, um, then you get all the nitwits that drive in the right-hand lane. They're switching lanes and competing like they're in a NASCAR race or anything. Utah drivers are very competitive and very aggressive. So... Um, if you're not a good driver, Utah's not a, a good place to be. Um, they don't understand the rules on how that the goal and goal is to get to where you are. Like in California, you know, California, you have an accident. Okay, three hours of your life is gone because you're stuck in a pileup. So anyway, I get down to Provo, and Provo opens up a little bit more. Everybody goes 80 in in Provo. So I was able to pick up the pace there and I got out of Provo and well it's a different world uh, when you get past Provo and I don't remember the only town I have memorized is Nephi down there. So when you get I got to Nephi um, it all picks up to around 85 90 miles an hour and well I discovered that my excursion hits the governor at um, uh, 95. So I set my cruise control. I was it, through that area down to Scipio. Um, you can only you can go 90, but they still have highway patrol down there. And if it's in the middle of the month, I I haven't seen it because I've made multiple trips, and usually during the middle of the month. Um, you never see any highway patrol at all. So anyway, um, so I hit the freeway, and uh, I've got a forty-four gallon tank in my in my excursion, so I can go a long way without having to refuel. My only concern is most uh, credit cards or or fuel stations will stop at a hundred dollars so that's my limiting factor uh, it's, it's not the excursion it's how much I have to pay at every time I fill up so that's my that's my limit so um, I was going down as fast as going down to, to California feeling California as fast as I could and uh, I had no thought of my phone or anything. And so I'm flying down there and I made the trip in nine hours from, from Ogden, Utah to Phelan, California. I made that, that trip. And surprisingly, and this is all kind of random stuff that I'm putting in here just for the, for the hell of it. Because, well, that's who I am. If you've ever watched my videos, then you know I, I lack pro focus sometimes. So, um, so I got down there, and everybody is all, "Where have you been?" And I'm like, "Driving." Can't you see? I just pulled up, kind of thing. Well, my mom had already passed, and my goal was to get to my mom 
before, but she had passed at 3 a.m. in the morning. So, um, and that's about the time that I laid down for to get enough sleep that I wouldn't crash because I had already been driving a bus, a, a, a transit bus for Utah Transit Authority all day, eight hours, and I get off at 1 a.m. So, I it, just for pure safety, it wouldn't be a bad thing to have two funerals. So, and that's just a, the practicality of that. <clears throat> so, I and the, the excursion, just to make it a note, um, my speedometer is two miles an hour fast from actual. So when I hit 95 or so, I'm actually going two miles an hour slower than my speedometer indicates. And what happens with the excursion is when you hit the governor, the suspension un unloads and it gets kind of noodly. But as long as it's under power, man, at 90 miles an hour, that thing is is rock steady. And uh, it's got the 373 gears and the, um, uh, not, they're, they're 30 inch tires on it. <coughs> so, which is why the speedometer is off. And, um, so I averaged in the high 12s in gas mileage at 90 miles an hour going all the way down. And the, the here's the weird thing that happened. Um, I, I made it through the canyon, for, uh, the Arizona canyon, uh, just after St. George heading towards Vegas. And I stopped at, the, the, in Arizona there's a pilot. I think it's a pilot or a flying J. They're the same company. So I, I stopped there and refueled and hit the, the, the freeway again. Now, I'm cruising at 90 miles an hour after the, the canyon. That would be stupid in an excursion to try to go 90 miles an hour down that canyon. Oh, it'd be fun if you made it through, but not... Uh, not necessarily, necessarily conducive to your own safety and others. So I um, did this trip, and um, and on this stretch on the the eastern side of Vegas or southern side of Vegas, because I'm not sure. I don't have a, my compass doesn't work in the truck, so I don't look up and see. So the, the excursion. So I'm flying along, and you know I'm having to to go in and out of traffic and everything. Okay, not wise, and I'm not going 90 because you can't when when that happens. Well, this guy, somebody, I don't know who he was. This guy in a, a Porsche Carrera kind of car or Targa. He had the whale tail on it, and um, it was kind of a metallic dark purple gray but you couldn't tell what the color actually was unless you're sitting at a car show and you look at it under bright lights so anyway this guy pulled up <coughs> and and he was stuck in the in the right hand lane I'm in the left hand lane and I'm stuck behind another slow poke so I slowed down because I know he, he, he's gonna be faster than me he's got a car that can go 160 miles an hour so I, I, I broke space and let him go. Well, he was my pathfinder all the way from Arizona to Vegas. And so we went 90 miles an hour, and that was as fast as I could go. I think he kind of got the gist of that. But he was my pathfinder going through. So I just followed him, and then when we hit Vegas, uh, he popped his hand up out of his uh, target cover, his... Uh, a uh, sunroof or a moonroof. Everybody has a different name for it. I call it a sunroof. And and I didn't really think about it while I was driving, but I didn't know he was really pacing me because he would slow down to, to my speed. I was going 90, period. That's as fast as I could go because I didn't like the way the excursion handled it when it's up against the governor. So he popped his hand up and waved me on 
and that was it and I did the rest of the trip and um, so I made it to, to California my mom had already passed and so I, I stayed over the night and it was kind of interesting the way things worked now uh, I had to give a I'm kind of a break here um, I did not know that my oldest niece, I, uh, uh, Chloe, sorry Chloe, I screwed that up, didn't I? Oh. So anyway, uh, so Chloe, my oldest niece, I did not know, she follows me on YouTube. So I discovered this later. So I'm giving a shout out to Chloe and um, Ivy, who is my younger niece, who um, I hope to repair that relationship with her, so I'm giving Ivy a, a shout out, and my sister Shell, and Chuck, and her her husband, my brother-in-law, and there and Ginger. There's a bunch of people that uh, were really supportive on this this whole thing. So, um, but that's part of a different story. So anyway, I made it there and to, to California and what happened was um, my mom had passed away so my sister had a conversation with um, my mom and she, it, to the effect of because I remember things wrong sometimes um, just because I'm thinking about a thousand things at one time it's a bad habit that I can't break so anyway um, I get there and my sister says well you can sleep in the trailer I'm like I'm not sleeping in the trailer which is where my mom passed away that's just me and plus it was cold and it was too quiet and I don't know how to work all the doodads because I don't own a television okay so I haven't owned a television since 1995 okay okay I'm with the weird one so anyway I went and got a hotel room at the, the Motel 6 and I was I went in and I got my um, commercial driver's license discount which was cool and then they put me in room 30, 313 because I smoked so they put me all at on the top floor well it's actually pretty cool because I always thought the top floor was was for the you know the, the wealthier people but I understand the purpose for it so anyway so I got room 313 I could barely sleep because I was still amped from driving the way I did and it's not a big deal but uh, so I'm still amped I didn't want to change my clothes or anything like that because I didn't work out know how to I'm not a hotel guy okay so I didn't know how to work the heater in the hotel because I looked flipped up the thing and it had a knob down there it was all broken I didn't see the thermostat over here behind the, the curtains so okay that and I didn't know to look because I don't go to hotels very often hardly at all and I haven't done a hotel since I was competing in bagpipes so that's a long time seven or eight years or, or less yeah seven or eight years so I'm not comfortable yet that's going to change maybe so anyway I uh, I get room 313 so I try to sleep I went over to Denny's in uh, Hesperia and okay um, I was disappointed with that because okay when you order eggs the toast is supposed to come with the eggs and I ordered the T-bone the steak this whole meal cost me 25 bucks okay at Denny's and uh, they didn't know my circumstances or anything like that because I didn't tell anybody and I wasn't talking to anybody it's just me by myself so how can they fix something they don't know about but so um, I have worked in food service extensively when I was a kid all the way from nine years old my mom had me uh, uh, working at the uh, Canyon Inn uh, 
doing weighing hamburgers, peeling potatoes, and, and making coffee, and, and that kind of stuff. Uh, because I was one of those kids you couldn't leave alone. <laughs> so, th that's just the fact. So anyway, I, uh, I, I go to this, this Denny's, and, you know, I get the T-bone steak and the rice pilaf or whatever it was, and, and, um, two over easy eggs. That's the way I like my eggs, over easy salt and pepper. And so, I, I'm sitting there, my eggs are getting cold, and I, they don't have rye toast. How come nobody has rye toast anymore? I like rye toast, okay? And I don't know why anybody else doesn't like it. So anyway, I'm sitting there, and so this, this steak comes, it's tough, uh, overcooked, you know, I like it medium rare, they gave it to me well, done, I'm not in a per position to, um, to really complain because I'm so flipping tired. So, and then the coffee came late and was middling, and then, it, it, you, you know, my whole Denny's experience was terrible because everything was out of order, my eggs were cold by the time I got my toast, and um, the only thing that was good was the A1 sauce. So, Denny's and Hesperia, you guys need to work on your, your stuff. And so I'm keeping that politically correct. So, um, anyway, I had room 13, 313. And so, I get up the next morning and, you know, my sister's kind of like, why don't you stay in the hotel or in the trailer? You just save money. And I'm like, no. Because it, it just wouldn't have worked out. So, I went and viewed my mom. And my sister had a conversation with my mom before she passed away. So, and basically, my sister asked, um, how, Mom, how am I going to know that you're okay, that you, you made it to the other side? So, it, um, my mom said, you can't, or I can't tell you anything specific, but it has to do with the color green. So, uh, my sister was like, okay. And so when we went to view my mom, um, we had my mom, cre uh, our mom, cremated. So here's this, what happened. Um, and, and I didn't even think about it because, you know, sometimes I'm Mr. Clueless. You can ask my, ask my ex-wife and my daughter and, well, some other people that know me. That Sometimes I, I don't get the obvious because I'm distracted by everything. So we're signing the paperwork for uh, the uh, crematorium, and my sister goes, look at the pen. And I looked at the pen, and it was green. And my sister's pen was green. And my, the, the lady that was administrating, her pen was green, okay? So we're, we're kind of, you know, tipping over into the weird side. So, uh, weird or amazing. So anyway, um, we're sitting there talking and be, you know, kind of BSing back and forth and everything's pretty casual. And so my sister was kind of non-reactive, but amazed kind of thing. She just pointed it out and I'm like, okay, you know. So we went over to view my mom and she, uh, she looked very peaceful. She looked totally in comfort, uh, totally relaxed, and it, I got kind of spooked because it was almost, I almost felt like her, she was going to speak. And I don't know if that was her spirit was, was there with me then or there because I haven't felt her spirit um, that I can say honestly. And so, <clears throat> um, so we went to go view her, and her casket was draped in a green cover. Then I looked around, and the walls are pistachio green. Okay, I know all the colors of the rainbow because I worked in retail also for a long time. Okay, in fashion, in home fashions. 
So I know all the colors and the names. So it's not weird for me, but it might be weird for other men in my generation. So anyway, the whole theme was green. And then my, my sister and I, and see, we'd never been to this crematorium before, and we'd have never uh, done any, you know, clues or forwarding or anything like that. Everything was green. So we have green pens, and we have um, green cover for the casket, and green um, walls, and green, the whole motif was green. And that's my, my mom's uh, favorite color. Obviously, mine's, my favorite color is orange, and there's a reason for it, but that's a different story. So anyway, she, um, so that went pretty well. My sister is not a good driver, and I'm a passenger, and I'm not a good passenger. So I was a little frightened. But anyway, um, we went back to, to, to mom's trailer, and uh, we're just kind of talking about random stuff, and everybody wants me to do all this stuff, I'm not ready to do it. I, it was an emergency trip. I had no plan. My only plan was to get there. So... <coughs> I uh, got that taken care of. I got church at 6.30. So I got that taken care of, and um, we went back to um, the trailer, and my sister's kind of going through things, and she said, this, 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 this stuff is yours, and there's other stuff that's going to be yours, and we have a china hutch that... I need to find a way to transport it from California. I got to take a back seat out out of my excursion, even if I if that's that trip is solely for this China hutch because it actually belonged to my great grandmother, and so I got to figure out how I'm going to do all this stuff because I don't know how much time I have left <clears throat> off from work. Um, and they look, I can't complain about anything because they've been more than tolerant this trip was unplanned. I told my dispatcher that night, I said, look, I'm not coming in tomorrow. You know, and it's not because I'm being a jerk or irresponsible or anything like that. So I've got a responsibility, a karmic responsibility, spiritual responsibility to my family on, on that level, at the very least to my mom. So we get there and... Um, my sister's going through stuff and we find some old 50 style glasses <laughs> and one's green and one's yellow she gave me the yellow one kept the green green one there used to be more and I don't know what happened to them but they're really cool 50 styles glass and that cafe diner green so she all kept that and um, so I went into the restroom and and um, and, you know, took a leak. Well, as I was coming out, I looked up and there's this really cool Art Deco clock. It's gold and, 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 you know, I'm like, well, that's a cool clock. I don't know where I'll put it, but I want it. So I took it out to my sister and, um, I said, can I have this clock? And she looked at it and she almost started crying. Um, she did a good job of keeping things together. So, here's the way it worked. Um, I don't know the exact circumstances. So, my mom, some, something happened, and she actually died around 3.13 a.m. Well, my, room, my hotel room is number 3.13. So, when I brought this clock out to my sister, I said, can I have this? She looked at the clock, and she said, Oh my God. And she about, she looked like she was ready to fall down, but I didn't know what to do, because I've been away for a long time, and, um, you know, people act, react to certain things in different ways. So I'm on guard, and she goes, Oh my God, kind of thing. And the clock had stopped running at 3.32 in the morning. And my sister says, well, 
and she's still in amazement mode, so I, I can't over underestimate it. So what happened was is on my mom's death certificate, the time of death was signed for 3.32 a.m. So my mom made it, uh, just so you know. And then, uh, so, <laughs> this part is funny and not funny. So, that's, that's the amazing part, and I'm glad you've made it this far, because now you've heard that. So, when I was driving out, I was incognito. My phone does not vibrate or anything, because when I'm driving, I'm driving. And that's just my habit. And so, apparently, everybody was trying to get a hold of me, and they couldn't get a hold of me. And, um, hey, girls. Get it, get it. So, anyway, um, he, I, I was driving, and everybody was trying to get a hold of me, and I don't know how this worked out. Well, oh, Facebook. So my sister apparently contacted Julie, who is my my ex-wife, and said, "What that? What? How do we get in touch or something like that?" There was all kinds of drama. They thought maybe I committed suicide or something like that. No, I was driving 90 miles an hour, both hands on the steering wheel. Which you know, the excursion drove so nice I could have done it one-handed, but. But that's it for something else. So anyway, um, they thought I had committed suicide or done something to myself or something like that. And so they did a wellness check on my house. And um, uh, so they contacted my, my ex, Julie. And, you know, they're like, well, I don't know how the conversation worked. I just know the... the, the the nitty gritty, no, not the nitty gritty, but the the, the outside parts. So, um, Julie, you know, it's, I guess they had a conversation of some sort, and she's like, "Well, what vehicle is there?" And they said, "My truck, Ladybug, and my and my Crown Vic." And Julie goes, "Oh, he's on his way," and everybody's like, "What?" And because they couldn't figure it out, well, my excursion is the best long it's the best road trip vehicle on the planet i love my excursion for that point point okay it doesn't get that good gas mileage but for road trips um because of the range of it of it you don't have to stop you can go get to your destination because we used to do all the, the road trips for the child swap kid swaps and all that. come on you want up here monkey meow so, anyway, everybody was all worried about me, and I'm worried about trying to get there before my mom passes away. And then when I finally got there, we found out that she had passed away right about the time I took my, my nap so that I could drive. <laughs> Come on, silly. Right now. So, anyway... Uh, that's the story, and there was all kinds of stuff going on, and, and trying to do it, and I have a, another story about when I had to go back out to California for my for the return trip for, no, for my my mom's uh, celebration of life. So if you've made it this far, I appreciate you watching. Thank you, and I'll give another shout out for. Um, Chloe and Ivy and Shell and Charlie or Chuck and uh, Ginger and everybody else that was, uh, everything went, turned out. Okay, so I still have another story to tell <clears throat> about this uh, Odyssey. And um, man, what a, this week and this year has been terrible. All of you guys. Just take it easy and, you know, drive safe. Um, I'm an experienced driver. I've been driving since I was nine years old. So, anyway, God bless.
I gotta get ready for church because church starts at 6.30 and I gotta go get money for tithing because I've been trying not to spend my cash. And thanks for watching and I appreciate everybody who watches my channel. It looks like I have three new um, uh, subscribers and uh, welcome and thanks for watching and I appreciate all of you guys and comment and uh, invite your friends I'm gonna try to pick up the pace on reposting but the this last month or two has it f has felt like a year so there's there's more story to come and uh, there it is uh, thanks for watching I'm gonna repeat myself and this is Jules he's my big fat sumo cat he's a good boy the only thing is when he sleeps on my bed he likes to lay on my feet and then and after about 45 minutes I can't feel my toes so wait silly oh good boy so what a bum view all right goodbye